So I was watching the X-Zone TV channel last night when I was abducted by aliens, and they kept repeating to me over and over again, SimulTV.com, SimulTV.com. What's SimulTV.com? That's what I asked them. They had it written on the side of their UFO. How do you spell that? UFO. No, I mean SimulTV.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Right. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Interesting that you were abducted by aliens in a SimulTV.com UFO last night. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Now that you mention it, I remember now last night, I was awakened from a deep sleep. My great-grandmother was standing there. She said she'd come from the hereafter to tell me about SimulTV.com. She even spelled it out for me. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com, Sonny Boy. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com, Sonny Boy. Wow. Yeah. Guys, you'll never guess what my psychic guru just told me. SIMULTV.com. Exactly. Are you guys psychic too? Of course. We all know about SIMULTV.com. SIMULTV.com. Welcome to the Connecting with Coincidence radio show with Dr. Bernie Beitman, MD, bringing together the world's synchronicity experts to help you use meaningful coincidences to develop spiritually, psychologically, and practically. For more information, put Connecting with Coincidence into your web browser to find the book, website, Psychology Today blog, YouTube channel, and Facebook page. And now, here is the host of the Connecting with Coincidence radio show, Dr. Bernie Beitman, MD. Yes, yes, yes. This is Dr. Bernie Beitman, MD, and thank you, Rob, for that introduction. This is Connecting with Coincidence, and we study coincidences. And to expand your mind, let's use the word interest. So let's start with some interesting words like interest, interpersonal, interspecies, and intergalactic. Yeah. Yeah. Now let's go to today's pithy phrase. Low probability coincidences deserve a search for explanation. Tossing them off as chance can miss some very useful explanations. For example, when things happen a lot in your life through sickness, job changes, major loss, major gain, vacations, psychedelics, meditation, coincidences are more likely to appear. Yeah, they're more likely to appear. Now let's add a couple of new words to our lexicon, coinciders. Coinciders are people who experience meaningful coincidences. And together, coinciders become, yes, insiders together looking at the meanings of synchronicities. We coinciders compare our experiences and find that the world is not the way conventional reality defines it to be. It seems, and many people have thought this in the past, our minds are immersed in in a mental atmosphere, which I call the psychosphere, which can allow us to be telepathic, clairvoyant and sense the future and my own kind of personal discovery is that we have a human gps capacity that is to get us places we need to be without knowing how we got there so let's sharpen your sensitivity to coincidences examine their potential uses and explanations read my book connecting with coincidence and learn along with me on this program and on my blogs synchronicity spoken here we have a very special guest today our very special guest is dr coincidence well, Dr. Coincidence is, is the alter ego of Dr. Bernie Beitman, uh, MD. That's me, Dr. Bernie Beitman, MD, the host of this radio show, CC with BB. Dr. Coincidence made his first public appearance at a stand up show in 2016, shortly after the publication of their book, my book, his book, our book, Connecting with Coincidence. He then produced the Psychology Today blog of the same name, followed by an album of coincidence songs called Connecting with Coincidence. He initiated the formal study of coincidences at the University of Missouri-Columbia in 2006. The research produced the Weird Coincidence Survey, 
which you can take at his website, coinsiders.com, as well as two issues of the journal Psychiatric Annals, which were about various aspects of coincidence studies. Well, welcome to the show, Dr. Coincidence. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Bernie Beitman, MD. And let me tell you, people out there in the radio land, I'm taking over this show. Dr. Bernie Beitman, MD, thank you very much. You can submit your questions to me. Uh, I'll consider them, but it's my show, and we'll have this continuing debate about who's the most prominent personality, Dr. Bernie Beitman, MD, or me. Yes, I'm Dr. Coincidence. So... You might ask, uh, how did I, Dr. Coincidence, get involved with the study of coincidences? Well, we got these songs. Uh, This guy, Francesco, and I put these songs together. uh, And the two two of the songs are um, about experiences that really influenced uh, the development of my interest and understanding of coincidences. One of the songs is about me and my dog. Now, I was eight or nine. I love my dog, and I have a grand dog, a grand dog uh, living in Denver named Walter, who is really adorable. And this dog, Snapper, was a mixture of many different things. They called him Heinz 57 varieties, which meant back in those days that, like Heinz products, there were 57 varieties. Uh, Snapper was a, a multiplicity of ethnic origins, or however you want to say it. And we were buddies. We'd sniff around in the garbage and behind the house um, and, you know, explore things together. And then one day I came I came home from school. I'm about eight or nine on my bicycle. And uh, I drive into, ride into the yard, and there's my mother in the front step. I say, hey, Ma, where's Snapper? And my mother just said, I don't know. Maybe go to the police station. Maybe he's there. Years later, I thought that was very clever of her. Why would the cops know where the dog is? But I was a nine-year-old and didn't know. I parked my bike in front of the police station, going through my elementary school, Moreland School, across the big road and up the stairs, um, and walk in this door, and there's this big desk and this big policeman sitting behind the desk, and I, I say, have you seen my dog? And he looked at me and says, sorry, son, Um, no. So uh, tears filled my eyes. I was really sad. Um, Where's my dog? I'm not going to see him. I'll go down the stairs, down to the sidewalk. I'm tears streaming from my eyes. So instead of crossing the big road, I take a right. I just don't know where I'm going. And I'm kind of dazed and kind of, where's my dog? I want my dog. And looking ahead forward, what is going on up there? I see a dog coming towards me, and he's got that sideways gait that Snapper has. So I said, wow, is that Snapper? Well, we get closer. It was Snapper. And he jumps up on my leg and pretty much says to me, where have you been? I mean, if you understand dog talk, that's what I got from him. My father used to say that Snapper laughs. Uh, the dog laughs. It's in German, is, is er, der, das Hund er lacht. The dog, he laughs. So I thought Snapper had facial expressions. I love that dog, and the rest of the story is is for another time. Uh, So there it was. uh, Somehow, through a coincidence, um, by making the wrong turn, I did the right thing. And those are principles that I apply now to a lot of coincidences. Doing the wrong thing at the right time sometimes gets you what you were missing and what you were looking for. So... That's one of the first things uh, that got me um, interested, but I didn't know what a coincidence was. I just got my dog, but reuniting a dog with his little kid, you know, it's a big deal. And then another one of the songs about my father, I won't talk about that much, but the basic idea about it was that uh, that um, 3,000 miles away, uh, the day before my 31st birthday, I was choking uncontrollably uh, at a sink in San Francisco, and 3,000 miles away, my father was choking on his own blood, dying. And, uh, you know, the death of a father, particularly like that, would get the son's attention. And he turned out, since it's 3,000 miles away and it was 11 p.m. in San Francisco, uh, 
it was 2 a.m. in Wilmington, Delaware, and 2 a.m. on February 27th, which was my birthday. So those two so, those two stories got made into songs, but that's only after a lot of other stuff. What'd you say, what'd you say Roger? What? Roger's my assistant, and sometimes he just gets in my way trying to bother me with stuff, but for this time, I'm going to, I'm going to ignore him. Yes, yeah, so that's how I got started. I had many other coincidences um, after that. Uh, one of my favorite in, in, favorites involved sports. I was a baseball player and a and a football player, and um, I imagined hitting the first pitch of a game for a home run. So much fun when to do that. <laughs> I only did it once, but. It was at a big game between the North and South of American Legion champions in the great big state of uh, Delaware. Delaware is ninety thousand ninety thousand nine is is three is nine hundred miles long. Is that it, or three hundred miles long? It's pretty short, but it's got a North and a South. And we played. We were the North, and we played the South. And I learned that even in Delaware, a small town, a small state like that, there was kind of a Mason-Dixon line between the North and the South. The North was industrial Wilmington, and the South was uh, Kent and Sussex counties, and they were small places, and they were rural. And so it was us big city guys playing the guys down in down from Kent and Sussex, and. Um, I was the first batter at the bottom of the first inning against a guy who went on to play uh, pro baseball. Uh, he played first base. He wasn't a pitcher named Costin Shockley. And they didn't get any runs in the top of the first. And I was up first in the bottom of the first. And Costin put it right over the plate. And I had it deep over the center fielder's head. And I was pretty fast. And he was running for the ball. My brother said, well, I rounded second base, and the guy still hadn't caught up with the ball behind him and circled the bases. And it was a home run to start. And I wasn't a big home run hitter. I was more of a bunter. So th those are some of the examples. But I had lots of them. And now in this part of my life, I see lots of them all the time. You are listening to Connecting with Coincidence with your host, Dr. Bernie Beitman, MD, on the Exxon Broadcast Network, and our guest is me, the Dr. Coincidence. Rob McConnell here, presenting an overview for Nicholas Paul Jinnix, author of a fascinating book, Amen. It presents facts revealed by Egyptologists, facts that enable us to understand why Amen is the beginning of creation of God. It provides recommendations for religious leaders of the major religions to unify their beliefs and teach the Word of God, love one another. Amen informs people how mankind conceived God, it was the Egyptians that developed the concepts of a soul, a hereafter, and son of God. And finally, after the worship of many gods, they conceived the belief in one universal God, the maker of all there is. For more information, visit www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. Whether you're a skeptic or a believer, join me, Rob McConnell, as together we'll investigate the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology here on the Exxon Radio TV show on XZBN and the Exxon TV channel on Simul TV. Since 1990, the Exxon Radio TV show has been the place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. Together, we'll investigate UFOs, aliens, ghosts, Bigfoot, psychic phenomena, lake monsters, conspiracy theories, government cover-ups, the truth embargo, alien abductions, ESP, haunted locations from around the world, and so much more. 
With over 28 years of broadcasting and more than 4,500 individual guests, The X-Zone is truly a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality, as evidenced by the credibility, integrity, and professionalism of the guests that we bring to our international audience. If you have seen a UFO, had a close encounter, seen a ghost, Bigfoot, lake monster, or a story that you would like to share or have investigated, contact me, Rob McConnell, by sending me your email to xzone at xzoneradiotv.com or you can call toll-free 1-800-610-7035, extension 143, and on Skype, Exxone Radio TV. For more information on the Exxon Radio TV show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, visit www.exxoneradiotv.com or www.exxonetvchannel.com or simultv.com and xzbn.net. Until next we meet here in the Exxon from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Always remember Exxon Nation. Keep your eyes to the sky and your heart in the light. Welcome, 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 welcome back to CC with BB, Dr. Bernie Biteman with Connecting with Coincidence. Yeah, but it's not really Dr. Bernie Biteman. I, I blew the I blew the uh, intro because it's I'm trying to pretend I was Dr. Bernie Biteman, MD, but I'm really Dr. Coincidence. And as Dr. Coincidence, I've been taking over the show. He'll come in here every once in a while, but he's given me a couple of questions that I might or might not try to address uh, during the show today. But I'll I'll consider it. I I did take one of his questions. How did I get involved you know, with the study of coincidences? Um, Involved is one thing. Uh, many are, what is it? How many are called and few are chosen? I mean, a lot of people are studying coincidences. But I don't know. I, I do like to brag, and I do have um, an ego that's kind of also off the charts in both directions. I feel bad about myself, I feel good about myself. But, you know, I kind of think that I'm on the leading edge of the coincidence business right now. Because I've accumulated a lot of different experiences. My producer, Rob, thinks my MD is not from like medical doctor, for, but from multiple, multiple disciplines. Because I know a lot of stuff of, from different places. And the reason I know a lot of stuff from different places is I loved introductory class, classes in college. I loved them. Because you learn a little something. They give you the best ideas right from the top to kind of hook you into it. So it was... I, I know I know a lot about uh, I know a lot of things a little a lot of things about a lot of different things. That's I guess that's what you could say. So I've been able to. I was a researcher. I studied chest pain and panic disorder. Uh, had probably still have the most papers in the world on chest pain and panic disorder. You know, chest pain and panic disorder is like, uh, hey doc, I got a, I, I got a heart attack. I'm having a heart attack. But you're like 25, you know, and you're. Uh, very healthy. So what's going on? A lot. Of, well, we looked at people like that who had a lot of who had chest pain and thought they were having a heart attack, and we did these kind of structured interviews, psychiatric interviews on them. And what did we find? A lot of them had panic disorder. You know, some of these people went to went to angiogram. You know, stick a stick a catheter up into some heart veins, heart arteries, and see if they're blocked or not. Um, so these people had, you know, thought thought they had enough pain and the doctors did too that they wanted to see if their arteries were open or not and uh, if it's a 30 percent or or less stenosis blockage then it's normal and some people even think 50 percent so the people who are below 30 percent in this we were pretty strict uh, came to be interviewed by us in this structured clinical interview thing and we found out a bunch of them had panic disorder like a third of them so they had panic attacks, and these were showing up like they had heart disease. But the cardiologists didn't know what they were. So this was the beginning of, yes, the great, the great discipline of disciplines, psychocardiology. Well, I just read that name. I read that a couple of days ago on something. It was an idea. I mean, the relationship between heart and mind. And a lot of people talk about heart and gut, you know, the gut 
heart interface and, you know, I think with my gut kind of things. Well, how about the connection with the heart? The heart's closer to the brain, you know, and it's got a lot of feeling in it and it's got to keep moving. And we feel like love in your in the heart. So there's a lot of strong – and you can break your heart when somebody breaks your heart. I mean, I mean, I had a big problem once when this girl broke up with me and my blood pressure really soared. And uh, the, there's a connection between love, heart and – hearts – Heart and soul, I fell in love with you, or hearts and minds are c- deeply connected. So there should be something psychocardiology uh, also, and I think it's developing. So I learned how to be a researcher. I did my own statistics. I wrote a lot of papers, got 40 papers out of this. I got to be, be chairman of a psychiatry department at the University of Missouri, Columbia. So I've got a research background to think about this stuff. I got an athletic background that's kind of practical. Uh, I'm 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 crazy about liking to work. I love having projects. I mean, I'm, and I like to write. So that's something I've been doing since I was 11. When uh, or 11th grade, I think it was. Um, yeah, it was 11th grade. I was in love with this girl named Miranda Miranda Fletcher. I thought love. I don't know what it was. And uh, I think I thought she didn't like me anymore. And. I went over to her house and she wasn't there and I just went home feeling very sad. And uh, it's the sort of thing where you feel your, feel it in your heart. Um, you feel that kind of feeling in your heart when Miranda doesn't love you or like you or something. I made it a lot up. She said she didn't. Uh, that was all. She said I was making it up. She did like me. But, you know, that was my drama. I, that's the way I experienced it. Heart and mind. So I've done research. I've felt a lot. I've been out in the world. Um, so I got kind of this, this kind of background to be able to maybe put a complex thing together. And also I like math. And I took a probability seminar uh, in college. And I got two A's in it. It may have been because the guy who was doing the seminar was the assistant coach on the baseball team. So I might have had a little up. So I don't know for sure. But I think I really liked – the probability business anyway, probability theory was very interesting. So I know I can think about statistics, which are a very important part of, of coincidences because of, of all the things you can say about coincidences is once you get two lines of life, two like events coming together uh, in a, as, as un- unexpectedly uh, and you call it a coincidence, you can estimate the probability of that coincidence. You can wonder – um, just what's the likelihood of that? And I've had, uh, I've, I've heard that Dr. Bernie Biteman, MD, the host of this show, Dr. Bernie Biteman, MD, Dr. BBCC, Dr. BBCC, MD, well, um, was making up, was talked to several statisticians on this show. And there's a kind of one of them was kind of like uh, more conservative, and the other was kind of like more psychodynamic almost. Uh, these two men, David David Hand, uh, it was was the more conservative guy. I asked him what his un- understanding of the world was, and he said uh, it's all stat it's all statistics. And so I got some idea from that 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 I won't be talking about now, but be writing about it in my next book. Okay, okay. Okay. Roger? Okay. Over and out, Roger. Okay. Roger is reminding me that I should get to the one of Dr. Coincident, one of Dr. Bernie Biteman MD's questions is um, what can you tell us about the book you are writing? Right, Roger? I read that. That's what he wants. Well, before that one, I'm going to go to uh, my last trip to. Um, my trip to uh, the, the Rockies uh, last week, because there's something important to say about that. And uh, it has to do with uh, Dr. Bernie Biteman, MD's question about what do you mean that you are sensitive to energy fields? OK, I mean, it's a good question for Dr. Bernie Biteman, MD, to ask me. What do I mean what, that I'm sensitive to energy fields? OK, <sighs> well, the Rockies are like new mountains, or the Appalachians are like older mountains here in the United States. 
the Rockies' uh, tallest are about half the size of the Him- of the like Mount Everest. I think it's like twenty eight thousand feet Mount Everest and fourteen thousand feet maybe the highest in the Rockies. And I, I went up that high a couple of trips ago. Um, it's really amazing. And the Appalachians, where I live near Charlottesville, are, are much much lower. So I was out there, uh, look near a place called Dream Lake. Yeah, Dream Lake. And I'm standing there and I look at these trees. It's about 9,000 feet. And I look at these trees and they're so beautiful. These trees are so beautiful. Their energy comes through me and comes, my mind goes out to them. And around me comes an energy field that goes way around to all the area that, it, this, that I can encompass with my mind around there in the mountains, in the valley. And it comes around to the back of my head and pops me in the back of my head and I wake up. I mean, from a little bit of a trance. So I was immersed in the energy field of uh, Dream Lake area. Then I go go with my friend Dina to go uh, eat a little snack by Dream Lake. I'm having a snack by Dream Lake with Dina kind of thing. And this bird kind of comes hopping around, a really cute bird. I mean, they're looking for something to eat. We're not supposed to feed the wild animals. Don't feed the wild animals, so Smokey the bear. No, that's a different Smokey. And this bird is dropping, it's dropping one tree to the other tree, to this tree, to that tree, and then gets a little closer, hops on the rock we're sitting on. And then this bird has the audacity, the temerity, to perch him or herself on my knee. So there's this bird sitting there on my knee or perched or on my knee, kind of looking around. Doesn't doesn't have the courtesy of looking me in the eye. He's just kind of looking around at everything. And then Dina says, I don't have my camera out. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. And then the bird uh, flipped away. And right after that, there was these little squirrel-like things with stripes on them. Uh, sounds like marmoset, but it's a different name. And I, we saw them. They're really cute running around. Uh, and... Suddenly, I feel this thing run over me, and it was one of those little squirrels just ran over my belly. I think the the bird and a little squirrely thing um, were were indicators that I was immersed in the energy field of uh, Dream Lake. I think I, I was part of the environment, so they could perch on me. You are listening to Connecting with Coincidence with your host, Dr. Bernie Beitman, MD, on the Exxon Broadcast Network. And our guest is the irrepressible, the most difficult, and the most interesting of characters, Dr. Coincidence. So I was watching the X-Zone TV channel last night when I was abducted by aliens, and they kept repeating to me over and over again, Simultv.com, Simultv.com. What's Simultv.com? That's what I asked them. They had it written on the side of their UFO. How do you spell that? UFO. No, I mean Simultv.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Right. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Interesting that you were abducted by aliens in a Simultv.com UFO last night. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Now that you mention it, I remember now last night I was awakened from a deep sleep. My great-grandmother was standing there. She said she'd come from the hereafter to tell me about Simultv.com. She even spelled it out for me. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com, sonny boy. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com, sonny boy. Wow. Yeah. Guys, you'll never guess what my psychic guru just told me. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Exactly. Are you guys psychic too? Of course. We all know about Simultv.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Rob McConnell here, presenting an overview for Nicholas Paul Jinnix, author of a fascinating book, Amen. It presents facts revealed by Egyptologists, facts that enable us to understand why Amen is the beginning of creation of God. It provides recommendations for religious leaders of the major religions to unify their beliefs and teach the Word of God, love one another. Amen informs people how mankind conceived God. It was the Egyptians that developed the concepts of a soul, 
a hereafter, and son of God. And finally, after the worship of many gods, they conceived the belief in one universal God, the maker of all there is. For more information, visit www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to CC with BB, connecting with coincidence with your host, Dr. Bernie Beitman, MD. And yes, this is really me. My my guest today is Dr. Coincidence, and he's a little bit of a kind of a pushy guy, but uh, he's my alter ego, and it's his program, and he's he's my guest. So welcome back to the show, Dr. Coincidence, and I have a question for you before you come back. What can you tell us about the book you are writing? All righty. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Bernie Beitman, MD. Beep, 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 beep. Dr. Bernie Beitman, MD. I'd like to see if I can say that really fast. Dr. Bernie Beitman, MD. The easiest way to say it is like BBCCMD, BBCCMD, BBCCMD. Okay, thank you. Appreciate the introduction. Now go talk to Roger. I'll try to answer your question. And your question if, is, again, what can you tell us, Dr. Coincidence, about the book you are writing? <sighs> now, first you've got to know this is football season. Uh, and here in Columbia, Columbia, Missouri, no, and this is not Columbia. This Here in Charlottesville, Virginia, this very beautiful fall day with these ochre leaves uh, right in front of my window and or- brilliant oranges around as well as the stark greens. This is when I loved running with the football the most at times like this. And I'm feeling this great urge to do this book because I want to get it down because this is going to be a fundamental textbook for coincidence studies. It's going to be if and when it happened, what I want to have happen, it becomes uh, a discipline that is studied someplace. It could be like Freud, which never really made it very well into the, into uh, the universities. Yeah, there are Freudian study people and divisions that are psychoanalytic, but mostly psychoanalysis and uh, Jungian analysis or analytical psychology uh, took place outside of universities. Well, now that I think about it, both Jung and Freud uh, were always outside of universities. Freud was denied being part of a university because he was Jewish in Vienna in the early 1900s. And Jung, I don't know, he he got his education, but uh, I don't know, his wife had some money, had a nice house on a a lake near near Zurich. and he did his private practice uh, after he was working in a mental hospital. Um, he did his he did research. I mean, Jung was a had a systematic research uh, thing on on word association. So if you think of say a word like uh, Rob, what do you think of? There's <laughs> a lot of things you can think of. So what do you associate that with? Um, and Jung would put together lists of those and see how far from the expected uh, the respondent uh, was from uh, the expected. Uh, so that's what he did, but he, he had some, Jung had some major experiences, and, he, and Freud did too, that influenced just what they did, but they were for the most part outside of universities, trying to make it inside um, in their own ways, and never really did except in little blitters and, bl- and dribbles and stuff. But they nevertheless got established pretty strongly as uh, idea sources in in the world. But I, Dr. Coincidence, but I, Dr. Coincidence, am, I'm sad to say, proud to say, difficult to say, I am a recovering academic. Now, I was in school for like most of my life, and that's kind of like being institutionalized. They let me out for the summers, including medical school. They let me out for the summers, but I still had to go back. And then I was 
in academics all the time. So that's the only thing I know. Freud and Jung were outside, so it was more easy. It was easier for them to do it outside. For me, it's still like I'm still a recovering academic. So if my thinking is and imagining and hoping and thinking is positive, however that all works, whatever the, my imagining the future that I see and think is a good idea kind of future thing – that this would be coincidence studies would be a thing studied at universities because I think my thinking is kind of like university like because I came out of it or something like that but anyway I'm kind of a shy guy and I don't know how to get anything going really like this but I think once I get the this book out yes I'll get back to the book Roger once I get this book out then I can kind of go into like the salesmanship part of this. But I got to get the content down. It's a little bit like, and there it comes to your nearest by movie theater, the true adventures of Dr. Coincidence. You know, if that, when that movie comes out, I, I think of it as a cartoon preferably, but somebody could act it out as people regularly, that they would come back to seeing that I had to do this, um, this, this book first because I am laying out the basics of what a coincidence is. I mean, there's a psychology part to it, like the psychology of coincidences. Like, um, let's say, um, I'm trying to come up with this word like psychocoincidology. Well, that came out all right. And there's like psychoneuroendocrinology. So I want to have psychocoincidology. You know, it might work. It's a little cumbersome as a word, but academic words tend to be that. It's the psychology of coincidences. So that's one part of the book. It's the beginning of it. And the first part is about your thinking yourself, and the, part, the other part of it is your maps for the world. It's like you have maps. We all do. We can't represent the whole world. So what is uh, what are our maps of the universe? Like that – statistician David Hand I talked with uh, who said that uh, the meaning of life is statistics I think I got an idea about what he meant I mean that was his view and if there's anything I have learned from doing this coincidence business business is I need to deeply respect the minds of the other person particularly their concepts of coincidences I've got to see what their concept of coincidence is because that concept is built on their concept of reality, their basic concepts. We can't have a lot of concepts jangling around in our brains about what's real. I mean, let's be serious, ladies and gentlemen. We got to like have some kind of unified way of looking at things because otherwise it would be jangled all the time. And people in various states of mind like being – psychotic or being on a bad acid trip can have a lot of different ways of thinking about the way reality functions. But you've got to have some kind of stable idea about it. The trouble comes when with a lot of people just have to have it rigid and never will change it. And there, then there are also other people who are willing to change it. But then it's good that some people don't change it because if everybody changed it all the time, then we'd be confused. But there's some of us who are changers who want to help the ones who are not changing so much to change. Well, you have to run that back on your radio dial to hear what I was just saying because I said it pretty fast. Underneath is your view of the world like the statistician. And when it comes to coincidences, there are two basic explanations people have for coincidences. One is God or universe. The other is random. And whichever side the person falls on or somewhere in between, I've got to know that. I've got to know where that person is coming from. And literally, where they're coming from, quote, literally where they're coming from, is what, are, what is their basic view of reality? How is it they filter? What is their map? What is their fundamental structure of the map they have of reality? So I've got to know that before I really like can think about who I'm talking with. So that's the second chapter is about maps of reality. Um, and then the, that's the first section, the psycho, the psycho coincidology section, first two chapters. And then the, the next section is um, 
on the taxonomy of coincidences. And I haven't decided whether to use the word taxonomy. It's kind of like a biological way of doing things. Plants and animals uh, are are categorized by taxonomy. I kind of like I kind of like the um, periodic table of the of the elements, uh, you know, with it has hydrogen and oxygen and lithium and carbon and all these different. And it's like a big uh, checkerboard, not a checkerboard, but a lot of squares in it. And the tops go, the, the columns fit together and the going across fit together. I mean, it's really cool. It's a, the, it's, it's the way chemicals uh, are like organized. It's not, it's pretty, it's pretty organized. It's like, and there's some kind of drippy little things off in the end in the corner that human beings making up um, stuff about making up new atoms, and you got to put it in the periodic table of the elements. Back when I was a boy, it wasn't as complicated as it got after a while. So I, I just uh, like that as a way of organizing things. But, you know, the way I really organize things is I'm a doctor. I'm a doctor. I became a doctor. Doctor Coincidence from Yale Medical School. Residency at Stanford in psychiatry. Doctor Coincidence. So I think like a doctor because I was trained and I do a lot of stuff. My whole day, a lot of my day or a good part of my day for many years was like being a doctor. Like, like, and that meant like being a psychiatrist, and that meant like thinking about diagnoses and thinking about categories of diagnoses, and then having to deal with with psychologists who think of continuums rather than categories, and then trying to figure out my patients and psychotherapy and where does that fit? Well, anyway, okay, okay. You are, you are listening to Connecting with Coincidence with your host, Dr. Bernie Beitman, MD, on the Exxon Broadcast Network. And our guest is Dr. Coincidence, who is really rocking and rolling today. you're a skeptic or a believer, join me, Rob McConnell, as together we'll investigate the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology here on the Exxon Radio TV show on XZBN and the Exxon TV channel on Simul TV. Since 1990, the Exxon Radio TV show has been the place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. Together, we'll investigate UFOs, aliens, ghosts, Bigfoot, psychic phenomena, lake monsters, conspiracy theories, government cover-ups, the truth embargo, alien abductions, ESP, haunted locations from around the world, and so much more. With over 28 years of broadcasting and more than 4,500 individual guests, the Exxon is truly a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality, as evidenced by the credibility, integrity, and professionalism of the guests that we bring to our international audience. If you have seen a UFO, had a close encounter, seen a ghost, Bigfoot, lake monster, or a story that you would like to share or have investigated, contact me, Rob McConnell, by sending me your email to xzone at xzoneradiotv.com or you can call toll-free 1-800-610-7035, extension 143, and on Skype, Exxon Radio TV. For more information on the Exxon Radio TV show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, visit www.exxoneradiotv.com or www.exxonetvchannel.com or simultv.com and xzbn.net. Until next we meet here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Always remember X-Zone Nation, keep your eyes to the sky and your heart in the light. You have heard of the X-Zone? Now watch it on Simul TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand worldwide and more does this sound like tomorrow's television well it is but you can have it today right now it is simul tv 
Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide. 15 exclusive channels like X-Zone, Sci-Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built-in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world. Interactive online network and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. I don't know if you know, but uh, you are now uh, on welcoming back to uh, connecting with coincidence uh, with Dr. Bernie Biteman, MD. That's me right now, but I'm really kind of blown out by Dr. Coincidence and all the little stuff he's doing. And finally, maybe I hope in this last segment, he'll get to the core of this next book we're writing. So back on the show, my friend and alter ego, Dr. Coincidence. Well, thank you very much. Okay, Roger, keep him busy for a little while. I'm at this. I'm at the show, and I'm going to answer your question in the last segment. Let's take a trip on the motorcycle of my mind. You, you heard me. Let's take a trip on the motorcycle of my mind, and we are going to be flying in from outer space and hovering over the great new planet called Planet Coincidence. From a distance, it looks like all one thing, all one, another ball suspended in space. Uh, but as our little motorcycle craft, craft comes closer to the planet, Roger, never mind, the terrain begins to differentiate. We begin to see separate continents, continents separated by something I don't know yet. Um, there's one continent where coincidences only involve the individual having connections between his or her mental events and the environment. But then there's another continent nearby but still separate where the people on that continent discover that their mental events mirror or reciprocate each other, two people or more people. And then more people, there's a third one where there are great numbers of people that finds that its members are thinking or doing, thinking about or doing the same thing around the same time. So individual planet, a two-people planet, where it's pairs of people and a plan and a, excuse me a, a continent a continent a continent and a continent of a group of people a, a continent made up of groups of people in which its members are thinking about or doing the same thing I, i'm stumbling along here because i'm learning from this while we're doing this i i just wrote this like uh like last week or no like a couple of weeks ago so having you listen to me talking about it helps me look at it in, a, in kind of new ways. So as we get a little closer, we see more outlines. And we see that coincidences involve pattern matching. That is that a pattern in my mind matches a pattern in your mind or matches a pattern in the environment. And here's a little clue about words. Roger told me this. He is worth something, Roger. Look at the word mental, M-E-N-T-A-L. Then look at the word environmental. Environ, E-N-V-I-R-O-N, means surrounding. And then there's mental again. So environmental means surrounding the mental. So when... I refer to a mental event being mirrored in some way in the environment. I'm talking about mental, environmental connections. Now, these connections involve two intersecting patterns that, as we define coincidences, cannot be 
explained by currently accepted scientific principles. The intersecting patterns, and this is this is one of those things that I want to be able to have you keep in mind. These intersecting patterns are composed of two basic elements. That's like why I like the periodic table of the elements. The, um, they just get down to basics. Just get down to basics, please. Don't make it so complicated. And the basics of a coincidence can be summarized as mind and thing. Now, like with a lot of things, we have to eh, things we have to um, be careful about how we use words. And one way is to be careful about it is to define the word. The word mind has a lot of different meanings. And I think my definition of mind in this context, I think it um, is con- consistent. It fits well with other definitions of mind. It may be, even be a pretty good one, generally speaking. So mind refers to the unobservables within you. The, unobserv- the unobservables the blah, 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 that no one else can see. And these include your sensations, your feelings, your images, and your thoughts. Your sensations, your feelings, your images, and thoughts. Thing, contraposed or in contradistinction, refers to objects outside the mind observable by any other person, including you. So it's something that's observable versus something that's unobservable except by you. Now, if if you can do any multiplying, which I have some trouble doing or adding or using your fingers, but you can come up with it. All right, here's the question, class. With these two, two elements, how many pairs of species made of two can I create? Mind and thing can make how many different species of made up of two things? Right. Three. You can do mind thing, mind mind, and thing thing. Mind can intersect with things and with other minds. Things can intersect with other things. Again, the things are can be animate. They can be people. And the whole thing about coincidence is one, at least one of the two parts of the coincidence is moving. Now, this is this is the part that uh, will probably probably end uh, in our, our our discussion and today. But this is what I really came up with recently: um, the various arrangements of mind and thing. And what are the various arrangements of mind and thing? How can they be? Um, how can those things happen? Because very, mind and thing is the most common version of, of these three possibilities, thing, thing, mind, mind, and mind, thing. The most prominent one in my research from what people have told me through answering the weird coincidence survey is that media and mind are the most common intersections. Next probably is intersecting of mind with a helpful person. Then inanimate objects, which usually means uh, finding something uh, that's lost, uh, that you find in a surprising way. There's a lot of stories about rings being in fish, rings that are lost. Some are made up, some are fabricated, and some are true. It's true of a lot of coincidences. It's telling the story which is true and which one isn't. It's, it's a trick. One of my favorites as a therapist is how environmental events mirror psychological conflicts. So what's going on in your mind is patterned out there in your environment. And a clear and clean example of that is for therapists, our problems walk into our office. It's really true. I've got a couple of patients who, whose ongoing problems mirror my problems. We're kind of like paired in, in a way that uh, we don't quite understand, but we learn from each other's experiences. They learn more from mine because I'm supposed to be the one with more experience, but I learn from them, certainly. They, they teach me things. There are amazing connections between animals, like Snapper and me, finding him. And animals also can be comforting. 
uh, like uh, Oscar the cat who knew when people were dying and would just go over to them when they were dying. Plants bloom at the oddest times, sometimes for some people feeling the experience of a loved one who has passed. Another one that's hard for people to believe, but it's happened to me a couple of times. Uh, a colleague of Jung's happened this all the time, uh, Wolfgang Pauli. Machines responded to his emotions. When Pauli got upset, angry, uh, laboratory equipment would fall apart. Uh, it, was, it became the, the Pauli response, so the Pauli effect. And then finally, uh, they're seeing the future. And there's all kinds of ways that people see the future where, where what you think then starts happening. Um, books that predict what's going to happen. Some people come up with a little bit of a, a little bit of a, on the edge where a couple of seconds before a bullet is going to hit you, you move, uh, or a couple of seconds before some kid has a, a tree branch fall on his head, you rush over there and pick up the pick the kid out from under where the branch was going to fall. That we have a capacity certainly in the short term, with stories like that, um, to be able to act quickly. And there are stories like that, and there's, there are many more. And there's good um, parapsychological research that suggests that this seems to be possible, to know something a little bit ahead of the time that it happens. So this seeing the future, these, this is a list, I'm going to go over it again, of the ways in which mind intersects with things. And then we'll come to the end of this Mind intersects with media to form coincidences, with helpful persons to form coincidences, with inanimate, inanimate objects to form coincidences. The environment can mirror psychological conflicts. Animals and plants can mirror what's going on in our mind and sometimes comfort us. Machines do respond to some people's intense emotions. And we have in us the capacity to some extent, to be able to see the future. Well, I want to be, I'm so glad I was on this program. Uh, it was a delight being here. And now I'm back to Dr. Bernie Beitman, MD. You are listening to Connecting with Coincidence with your host, Dr. Bernie Beitman, MD, on the X Zone Broadcast Network. And our guest has been the fabulous Dr. Coincidence. If you are looking for a safe, zero-calorie, natural option to the harmful artificial sweeteners on the market today, Just Like Sugar is what you're looking for. Just Like Sugar is a wonderful natural alternative for those health-conscious people who choose a calorie-restricted diet with a great, pure, sweet flavor that tastes just like sugar. Just Like Sugar is a great natural option for people suffering from diabetes and may be useful in restricted diet programs where standard sugars are not allowed and does not cause a laxative effect of some other sweeteners. Just Like Sugar comprises a perfect blend of chicory root fiber, natural calcium, natural vitamin C, and Just Like Sugar sweetness comes from the natural flavors from the peel of the orange. Just Like Sugar is a natural alternative to harmful artificial sweeteners and will change the way that you believe all natural sweetener products taste. Just Like Sugar is available at your local Whole Foods markets, Wild Oats markets, Henry's, Sun Harvest, and many other fine natural food stores in the U.S., Canada, and worldwide. You have heard of the X-Zone? Now watch it on Simul TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simul TV. Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide. 15 exclusive channels like X-Zone, Sci-Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built-in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world. Interactive online network and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today.
Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. 